Hello students, welcome to the lecture on change and development in rural society and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Describe the history of land and land reforms in India. Discuss the action plan of rural development. Explain the concept of green revolution and analyze the impact of green revolution. Let us proceed with the lecture. Transformation in rural context denotes the successive changing patterns conceived in rural set in its structure, function, form and character both in positive and negative directions. It highlights all major shifts in rural economy and its canvas encompasses agricultural as well as non-agricultural sectors. The policy designs like Mahalanobis in India emphasize the real resource creation aspects in the developmental process. Sociologically speaking, the scenario of transition in rural society, especially in post-independence era, suggests that the process of planned development has created diverse patterns of rural transformations in its different spheres. History of Land in India The value of land is ever increasing and requires little renewal and replacement and requires little renewal and replacement. Due to this basic utility, economists treat land as a special kind of property. Land reform means the distribution of surplus land to small farmers and landless tillers accrued as a result of the implementation of the ceiling on agricultural bonding. The main objective of land reform program is not only to increase agricultural production but also to build an egalitarian social order as contemplated under the Constitution of India. The Indian Taxation Enquiry Committee contains a summary of the main views on land ownership in India. Rig Veda Samhita shows that among the Indo-Aryans, arable land was held in individual ownership or family ownership. Communal ownership was confined only to grassland. Private ownership of land was a recognized institution. Land belonged to the person who cleared the jungle and brought the land under cultivation and he could sell, give, bequeath or otherwise alienate it at his own discretion. There was a clear distinction between ownership rights and restricted real estate rights. It is clear from this information that individuals or group of individuals enjoyed ownership with respect to land but the ruler had a supreme power to levy taxes as a price of protection and not ownership. During the Hindu and Muslim period, land was considered the property of the village. Since land revenue was the major source of revenue, revenue was assessed and collected through a village leader or chief or zamindar. The task of revenue collection was assigned to intermediaries broadly divided into four classes. The chiefs. The Hindu chiefs who had some claim to sovereignty but had submitted to Muslim rulers on terms of payment of a fixed tribute were known as chiefs. The headman. It was a common practice for revenue assessors to come to terms with the village headman for the revenue to be paid by the village as a whole. Farmers. A farmer would agree to pay a certain lump sum amount to the state but would collect more from the peasants and make a profit for himself. Assignees They were important officers that took over the administration of an area including the task of assessment and collection of revenue. The Bengal Land Revenue Commission was set up under the chairmanship of Sir Francis Rond in 1939 which is a landmark in the abolition of the Zamindari system. Some of its major recommendations are Abolish the Zamindari system Bring the government into direct relation with the actual cultivators by acquiring superior interest in agricultural land Eliminate sharecropping Regard the sharecroppers as tenants with definite right on the property. 
land reforms in india landlessness is the main cause of rural poverty in addition to food insecurity and vulnerability to exploitation landlessness brings various obstacles in routine functioning of the agrarian system the answer to the problems posed by landlessness lies in effective land reform legislation land reform is the redistribution of land from those who have excess of land to those who have none with the objective of increasing the income and bargaining power of the rural redistributive policies seek to secure land rights and ensure redistributive rights legal framework and land reform in india the constitution embodies the need for land reform in the directive principles of state policy article 39b explicitly highlights the state to ensure that the ownership and control of material resources of the community are so distributed as to best subserve the common good issues and challenges of current framework the statutory framework of land reforms in the country seeks to serve the following objective redistribution of ceiling surplus land to the landless security of tenancy abolition of intermediaries future of land reform redistribution of public lands is an easy first step in land reform in andhra pradesh farmers have been allowed to encroach government waste land and supported with assets and food subsidies in philippines the comprehensive agrarian reform law carl was implemented with implications like distribution of all agrarian land to the tillers support services like credit market access infrastructural facilities like irrigation water road etc simply redistributing land from the rich to the poor may not be enough to obtain a more egalitarian rural society redistributed land must be protected from land grab it must procure secure and productive land and redistribution rights legislators must ensure participation of the farmers in deciding boundaries noting claims and complaints and recording opinions and objectives of the village members development actions it is a fact that our country's sustainable gross domestic product gdp will depend on the sustainable development of agriculture which employs more than 60% of india's population enhancing pro poor rural and agricultural investments and cutting subsidies the first strategic decision must be to raise the level of public investment in agricultural and rural india the green revolution has been stagnating in the northwest states of punjab haryana and western uttar pradesh india must invest in new technologies and the institutions to accomplish these technologies one major technology in the indian context is the one that produces drought resistance setting up a body like the national biotechnology regulatory authority nbra would enhance regulation of biotechnology in india public policy should facilitate private investments in rural areas by removing control on private investments as well as providing tax concessions for investing in rural areas heavy participation of user groups and non-governmental organizations in maintaining public infrastructure is required to turn the process of rural development from top down to bottom up reforms with a human face addressing the landless poor any credible broad based development strategy must involve public policies aimed directly at promoting asset accumulation by chronically poor households welfare programs like the integrated child development scheme 
ICDS, Public Distribution System, PDS, Employment Guarantee Scheme, EGS, etc. should be transformed from social assistance to social development programs that contribute directly to the creation of physical and social assets. There is a need to rationalize wages in public works programs walking the line between too high wages and too low wages. The existing social safety net programs in India need to be revisited to assess their targeting mechanisms, coverage, cost effectiveness and overall impact on poverty alleviation. Addressing the water challenge Rapid growth in the non-agricultural water demand, the unsustainable overdraft of groundwater and a slowdown in the growth of water supply investments are leading to growing water challenges in agriculture. Here are a few steps to overcome these. Increased investments in agricultural research could boost agricultural productivity to compensate for the diversion of water from agricultural to domestic and industrial needs. Generalized domestic and industrial water subsidies need to be replaced with subsidies targeted to the poor. Water policy should be designed to induce investments, improved technology and conservation of water. Crop diversification should also be encouraged. Water rights combined with appropriate incentives are essential for establishing rational water allocation and hence should be encouraged. Recommended actions India should increase investments in rural infrastructure and agricultural R&D. India should reorient its social safety nets to create more employment in rural areas. Managing water use through institutional changes such as water rights that are based on farmer groups would help. India must liberalize its marketing and trade policies to encourage vertical coordination between farms, firms and folks. The Green Revolution India adopted farming strategies under the Green Revolution in the mid-1960s. The application of modern farming technology, introduction of high-yielding varieties of seeds, increased use of fertilizers, development and expansion of irrigation systems and the extension of credit and educational services to farmers resulted in a drastic increase of farm products leading India to achieve self-sufficiency in food within a short period of time. Background of Indian Agriculture The levels of agricultural production in India in the post-colonial period were much higher than the levels achieved in the colonial era. Between 1949 to 50, agricultural output grew at the rate of 2.7% per annum which earlier was a mere 0.8% per annum. The decision to adopt the Green Revolution was precipitated by the drought of 1966. The main objectives of the Green Revolution were to make available the required inputs in sufficient quantities, to encourage investment in fertilizer factories and the manufacturing of agricultural equipment, to identify and coordinate agricultural research activities to raise productivity, to intensify agricultural extension service in selected areas, to provide adequate credit to the farmers who are willing to grow varieties of cereals and adopt the appropriate farm practices, to implement a production-oriented cereal price policy. The success of the Green Revolution the factors that contributed to the success of the Green Revolution High yielding varieties of seeds This was the main scientific aspect of the Green Revolution. The discovery and use of standard high yielding variety of seeds ensured a higher yield per acre for the farmer and raised agricultural productivity considerably. Double cropping Due to the early maturity of new seeds, 
it became possible to grow two or three crops in a year from the same piece of land. Use of fertilizers. Increased use of fertilizers also contributed to significant increase in agricultural output. Use of modern machinery. The increasing use of machinery and other modern equipment such as tractors, pump sets, power tillers, etc. enabled multiple cropping and the growing of high yielding variety of crops. Extensive irrigation facilities. It made it possible to extensively provide water to farmers and ensure better use of land and multiple cropping. Improved credit facilities. Improving credit facilities helped in alleviating the lack of financial resources. Plant protection scheme. Protecting plants using pesticides and other such devices was another important aspect of the Green Revolution. Expansion of farming areas. The expansion of area under high yielding variety of crops contributed to the success of the Green Revolution. Miscellaneous factors. Improvements in storage, food processing and marketing facilities as well as government support price policies also led the Green Revolution to success. Results of the Green Revolution The Green Revolution resulted in the record grain output of 131 million tons in 1978-79. It also established India as one of the biggest agricultural producers of the world. The Green Revolution created jobs not only for agricultural workers but also for industrial workers by creating lateral facilities such as factories and hydroelectric power stations. Impact of Green Revolution Impact on poor producers The adoption of high yielding variety of seeds has resulted in an increase in the net gain of the small farmers as well. The Green Revolution has benefited producers who control optimal production environments or who have access to such environments irrespective of farm size. Impact on Landless Labour The various advances brought by the Green Revolution increased the demand for labour. This also further increased wages. Mechanization has not always resulted in labor reduction, at least not in this case. Summary Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. Land reform means the distribution of surplus land to small farmers and landless tillers. During the Hindu and Muslim period, land was considered the property of the village. Since land revenue was a major source of revenue, revenue was assessed and collected through a village leader or chief or zamindar. Land reform is the redistribution of land from those who have excess of land to, to those repeat to those who have none with the objective of increasing the income and bargaining power of the rural. India adopted farming strategies under the Green Revolution in the mid-1960s. The Green Revolution created jobs not only for agricultural workers but also for industrial workers by creating lateral facilities such as factories and hydroelectric power stations.